Hell's Paradise, also known as Jigoraku, is one of the most anticipated animes of the year, and I couldn't wait to share some of the things in Hell's Paradise universe that come from real life. From mythical creatures to real places that inspire this crazy story, despite only being a few episodes into the anime, there are still so many exciting things to discuss. First, I wanted to say that I tried to not spoil anything, so if you've never read the manga, don't worry, you're safe. I got you. Now let's head into it. 1. Sagri, as we've learned, is the daughter of the former Yamada class leader. But did you know that the Yamada clan was a real family of sword testers and executioners that held the position of the unofficial executioner for the shogunate? Their story began with Yamada Seiman Saratake, a disciple of the Yamano family who was the previous family in this job. The Yamada family ended up having many students and passed down this office for eight consecutive generations, along with the name Yamada Seiman. By that time, Sword testing was commonly performed on the corpses of criminals, and they performed these tests for the governor and any sovereign willing to pay them to do so. They also used to sell these corpses since some samurai wanted to do the testing themselves. Imagine being a samurai casually reaching out to the Yamada family to buy a corpse to take home. Just a regular Tuesday. The height of the Yamada family ended shortly after Tokugawa's fall in 1868, since sword testing on corpses and beheading was abolished and, with it, their job. Two. Now, coming back to the Hell's Paradise version of the Yamada clan, do you notice that this guy doesn't have a standard sword or katana? I looked around and plenty of curved swords could have worked as a reference, but I found this one and I felt like it could be a strong inspiration. This one is called a Falx and it was created in Europe. It is said to be so strong, it can break through shields and armor. And the main difference between the Falx and Fuchi's sword is that Fuchi's has a sharp edge on the other side of the blade. Three, as I was watching the first episode, when Gabimaru sets himself on fire out of nowhere, I knew I'd heard something about it in real life. So I started doing my research and I found it. My theory is that this ninpo or ninjutsu technique is a mixture of two things, pyrokinesis and spontaneous human combustion. The former is the ability to create and control fire with your mind, and the latter is when someone dies from a fire with no apparent external ignition source. There have been reported cases worldwide, and it happens mostly to old people who are overweight, drink or smoke, and live alone. I gotta admit that this made me fear aging and ending up drinking in my house alone as an angry old man. And if I unlock that new fear, I gotta take y'all with me. You're welcome. Now, I think it's a combination because despite pyrokinesis being controlled at will, I haven't heard much of it being used to set oneself on fire. And spontaneous human combustion usually involves the whole body, but as far as we know, it's not voluntary. And one of the strongest theories on how this happens is the wick effect in which the clothing of the victim works as a wick once it gets saturated with body fat. So once the fire begins, it can last for hours and hours because of this effect. Four, as you may have heard, there's plenty of Buddhist and Taoist imagery in Hell's Paradise. But right now, I'll focus on these guys. They're called Monshin and have a very impressive resemblance to Nan Yen and Nang Thong of Wang Sen Suk, a sort of Buddhist temple where you can see how Buddhism depicts hell. Nan Yen and Nang Thong seem to be giant preta or hungry ghosts, usually shown as human-like creatures experiencing eternal hunger and thirst. They seem to be trapped in purgatory because they didn't sin enough to be in hell, which makes sense since they're the ones that greet you once you enter the park. And before heading into the craziest part of the video, have you heard of Waku Waku, aka the number one anime newsletter? You should definitely join the Waku Waku family for weekly news, announcements, and monthly prizes. You could win one of the three katanas we're giving away every month. Only someone out of their mind would decline such an invitation, which you can find in the comments below. Now, let's get back to discovering the crazy things from our world that made it into Hell's Paradise. Five. Now let's talk about this big guy. His name is Twisted Kayun, and he was inspired by Benkei, a Japanese warrior monk almost seven feet tall. It was said that if he considered a samurai arrogant and imprudent, he would challenge him so he could take their sword. Rumor has it he collected over a thousand swords from those he didn't believe worthy. Kayun died in a half standing position, pierced through with many weapons, which is very similar to the death of Benkei, who's depicted as standing with weapons riddling his body. Obviously, they could both resist many attacks and even keep moving after a weapon had pierced their body. Six. It is said that Iwagakure, the shinobi village where Gabimaru is from, is modeled after Iga, also known as one of the birthplaces of ninja arts. You can go to the Iga Providence in the Mie Prefecture 
where you'll find a ninja museum built like a ninja house. Plus, they also make shows using real weapons and stuff. It does seem like a fun place to go if you like ninjas and you just happen to be in Japan, you know? Seven, just like the Iwagakure was inspired by a real place. The island kind of is too. Let me explain. There are two tales related to this place. The first one is from the eight immortals from Chinese mythology. These eight immortals live on five islands in the Bohai Sea in China. Penglai is probably the most famous of them. People realize it not only because of this tale, but also thanks to the mysterious mirages that occasionally appear on its coast. Thousands of people have seen buildings, cars, and even other people, just as if an entire city appeared out of nowhere right there. And thanks to being known as the mainland of the eight immortals, some emperors sent people there to go and find the elixir of immortality. The second tale is Onigashima, a fictional island full of ogres, or oni. I added this one since one of the characters compares the place they're in with Onigashima, because both sites are full of monsters and creatures they gotta defeat. And also, the original story idea for the manga was an expedition to Onigashima to eliminate the demons living there. Now, there is a real place that people have linked to Onigashima. This place is called Megijima. The caves at the top of the Washigamine summit are a famous tourist spot since they're thought to be the homes of the ogres of that story. But many other people go there for the beach and cherry blossom viewing during springtime. Onigashima comes from the tale of Momotaro, which is a boy who comes out of a peach to be the child of an old couple who could never have children of their own, and then goes to fight all the ogres in Onigashima and comes back to his hometown victorious. The most curious thing about it is that in some versions of it, the boy doesn't come out of the peach but the couple eats the peach instead, which brings back their youth, and they traditionally had Momotaro. That caught my attention because that version somehow also has to do with a special something that prolongs one's lifespan, just like the thing that triggers the beginning of the whole journey in Hell's Paradise. Which real life thing surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments section below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy content like this. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.